before we start this video, a large thank you to Hunter, Riff, Ghost, Gabriel, Mexica Strength, and Steve for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And a special thank you to Samuel Hartman for their immense support to the channel this month on Patreon. I hope you enjoy the video, my friend. Hello, guys. And before we start the topic of today, we have some unintended functionality. So before we made these damageable character layers, but you can see now I can push this character. Now, we don't want this. So let's go to Project Settings and untick character colliding with damageable character. See, we only want larger characters to be able to push us. We don't want humanoids being able to push other humanoids of the same size. So again, untick character colliding with damageable character and that will fix the problem. In the future, we're going to make it so we have a special case for creatures that are larger and they will be able to push us, but we won't be able to push them. But for now, that's not important. Let's get the basics out of the way first. Just tick that box and then you won't be able to push your other players anymore. Okay, so we have a couple things to address here. One being if I jump here on my host, if I go to the client and try to jump, I can't actually jump. And this is because if I were to bring in this window right here and I go over to the player network manager, you're going to see that my stamina is actually zero. And this is because we never initialize our stats when we join as a client. You see, we're deleting our original game object and remaking it again. So we need to, again, initialize our stats from our save file. Also, you can see here if I go to the client view and jump from the host point of view, you can see the jump looks a little bit strange. So we're going to fix that too. So let's remedy the first problem by going into the player manager. And we'll start there. On, on network spawn, we want to go down to the bottom and make an if statement. And it's going to be if we are the owner and we are not the server. This would imply that we are joining another person, which means we had to delete our game object, stop as host, and start as client. So we need to reload our data from our current save after we've spawned, which is why we do this on, on network spawn. And uh, let's make a comment here. This is upon connecting. If we are a client, and we are the owner of this character. Because if you're the server, you don't need to run this because you've never deleted your game object to join another person. As I said before, when we stop being the host and start the connection as a client, we actually delete our player object and then reinstantiate the default player model. So then we need to reload all of our data from our save file. I hope that's clear. So this will fix it. And I'll just make another comment here. Now we don't run this if we are the server because we basically don't ever delete our character. So we don't ever need to reload stuff from our save data file. And now when we load into a game as a client, we should have our stats uh, basically set up properly. So now I'm in here and you can see, yes, I do. I have my stamina. If I click both these player objects, you can see they have their stamina set up. That is working as intended. Now, the jump still looks a little scuffed uh, because we never finished it for multiplayer. It's quite simple. We need to delete the is jumping bool from the player manager or the character manager and make it a network variable. Now, why is this? Well, basically, some of our ground detection logic utilizes this bool, and we need to know if we're jumping in order for it to process correctly. Uh, and since this is not a network bool, we can actually never know if the other person is jumping because it's never updated properly. Now, you could uh, update this using animation event at the start of jump and the end of the jump, turn it off, but I like doing it here. Uh, it's a lot more safe. So I'm just going to make it a network variable. And like before, um, over here on reset is jumping. Since this is on an animation state, I'm going to check if we're an owner before we switch this back to false. And then I'm going to call this on the character dot character network manager dot is jumping dot value is equal to false. I'm checking if we are an owner because like I said, this script exists on an animation state. So it's going to get ran on every game object that has it. So every character in the scene. Next, I'm going to go to the character um, locomotion manager over here. And I'm going to change again is jumping to character network manager dot is jumping dot value. I'm going to save that. Just basically go to wherever you find an error. Um, over here, reset action flag. I am going to check for owner because this again is called on an animation state. So it will be called on every character game object in the scene that hits this animation state, regardless of whether you own it or not. Um, but in a place like where you're calling from an input action, since that's on the player input manager, for example, you don't need to check if you're an owner because that's only being used if you're the owner of the scene. Um, so over here, we have handle jumping movement. You just call it again if player network manager is jumping that value is true. So that's good. Save that. And there's just a couple more left. Let's see where these are at. Yeah, so attempt to perform jump. You don't need to check if you're an owner here um, if you don't want to. You can. It does not hurt. It's definitely safer. But we're never going to be able to run this logic as not the owner because the way the scripts are set up. So I'm not going to check here. 
And in the future, if I change it, then I will come back and check if we are an owner before changing that bool. So, okay, now if I go to the scene here, you can see I'm just gonna jump off of this pillar and boom, the jump looks totally normal and very, very clean and neat and nice. And that's working as intended. We can actually even make it more neat in the future. And we're going to, um, you probably wouldn't even notice it, but when we get into weapon-based actions very soon, I'm gonna show you what you can do to make it even more smooth. We're gonna basically blend between the network position and the local position, uh, depending on some factors in the scene, but that's not important right now, let's move on. So the last thing was when you load into a game, you jump. This is because you can see here, we do disable our player input manager until we load into the world scene, but we actually already enable our player controls. So we're if I press the button here, if I go down to low game and press A, for example, you can see the jump input turns on, see that? So this is quite simple. We're never actually disabling the player controls component, which we um, turn on on unenable. So just say player controls dot disable at the end of start. And then on our scene change here, you want to basically enable them when the world scene is true. And I'm gonna check to see if they're null before I do this just in case, just to be on the safe side. So if player controls do not equal null, then player controls disable. Um, and then down here on scene change, you want to make it so when you are in the world scene, you enable them. And when you are not in the world scene, you disable them again. Some of you might be thinking, well, how do we go through our menu And you, uh, if the inputs are disabled? Well, the menu has its own set of inputs that Unity kind of defaults to. Um, you can also edit and change those too, but this won't impact our game. And here you go. You can see it works. Now I don't jump up into the air as soon as I start the game. So that is that fixed. Um, I will go over every single one of these little polish elements, by the way, guys. This is going to be different from the Soul series and the fact that I will show literally everything that I do. So um, if you guys have any of these things that pop up that you'd like to see, like somebody requested that I cover the don't jump on load screen a little while ago, so I figured I would do it. I also needed to finish the jumping anyway, so I decided I would do it all in this one video. All right, guys, so in the next video, we're going to start our item-based action system, which is basically just a way to set it up. So depending on what you're holding, it will have different actions for different inputs. So for example, if you're holding a straight sword, the right bumper action will be a light attack, unless you're running, and then it will be a sprinting light attack. If you're holding a bow, the right bumper action might be to notch an arrow. So this is going to give us some actual attacks with our newly created weapons. And then from there, you will be able to fight other people who connect to the game. And after that, we're gonna do some basic AI so we can get a nice little game loop going. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you all have a lovely weekend, unless you're a patron and you're watching this early, in which case I hope you have a lovely week and a lovely weekend. I'm on vacation for a little bit. The video schedule will not be impacted, but I may be a little bit late getting back to messages. So I will see you guys in the next one. And as always, thank you very much for tuning in.